Uh, but we'll have to see where Zanzara opts into. It's actually going to be the first pick GP for catch cost up in the top lane. So a, a little bit of a statement pick here, really saying that he fancies this over all other picks. Uh, the core key, in fact, something that completely slipped my mind as well. Certainly would have been up there for my B1s of choice. Yeah, I like these. They're basically the safest solo lane blinds in the game. And now you've got a great blind pick Lucian as well, you know, I we were talking about hyper carries that Misfits Premier likes to play on the bottom lane and taking out the Callista, I think, kind of lends itself to that. So what do you do when you want to combat the hyper carry? You pick the other super aggro laning ADC, and I think that makes a lot of sense. And now if you're Misfits Premier, you've got a top laner locked in. I feel like this gives you a lot of room to maneuver in the draft. You've got a mid lane counter pick that you can go for. You've got enemy ADC removed. Maybe go towards the duo lane. What are you really looking for? It's uh, Redude as it is a Nautilus locked in first. I was looking for Jin Nami. That would have been my answer uh, because you take away the Nami from Lucian. Jin, we've just seen, actually have a very powerful game. But instead, they're going to go for the Nautilus, opt into some full on hard engage, regardless of the distance that Corky can uh, buy from you. If you get in range of that death charge, you will be CC'd at a time, and then the Corky can be collapsed on the same sort of thing to be said for the Lucian as well. They do match mid lanes here, keep their cards close to their chest a little bit in terms of that jungle matchup. We have seen them do this a few times, and Zanzara likes to know what jungle matchup he's going to be playing tend uh, before he tends to go for his pick there. So with this Azir locked in in the mid lane, something we see frequently from that realm is that they can just go for very early trades. They tend to win out early on before we see the Corky really scale up to be a bit more of a poke nuisance in the late game. And there's that Nami, most likely going to be locked in here by Solari. He called it. I mean, I, I, I think that would have been a good strategy, but it seems like Misfits Premier, they're going to go somewhere else. And Rude Dude, we're getting our first uh, Azir Corky here uh on the stream uh -huh, today i think uh, azir, yeah. azir has hit the ban hammer i think twice so far i think it was banned in both games so this time around we are going to see it come out maybe a bit of a snooze fest in the mid lane but definitely a lot of team fight prowess and it does open up uh solari to ban out some adcs here and i think something that's interesting too and maybe you could shed some light on this is it was a first pick blind pick gangplank and solari did not opt to match that in this first phase of bans which will open up misfits to target ban out Keo on the top side. Maybe they've got something uh, yeah. up their sleeve. Uh, Solari play Akshan. Um, now, my, 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 my concern about this is that tend, uh, their, their history says that they don't play Akshan too well. Um, <laughs> Keo has had a, a game on it up against an Olaf where it didn't necessarily go too well. But that's a pick that I've seen from them a couple of times. I also think we've seen Scarlet play it in the mid lane. I don't know. I may be putting my foot in my mouth there with that one. But it is a pick that they have up their sleeves. So they could very well uh, try and take it. But with the composition they have already, they've got a lot of marksmen. Uh, Corky not necessarily a marksman in the traditional sense anymore but i think that jocko opting into a sort of frontline style champion and then something like the akshan coming through wouldn't be too much of a surprise to me and that's why they could be seeing okay is this composition good for this or do we need to just go back and default to something more traditional oh okay and the wukong gets locked in this was something that was a hundred percent presence up until today and it had zero presence in our first two games i was actually kind of like wow I, my my stat that i came in with for today was <laughs> yeah. was out the window but it's back uh Clearly, Solari still favoring that for Jocko. So, e interesting pickup. It does open up, again, an R5 top lane counter pick, unless it's Lucian top, but why, then why would you pick the Nami? So, no, no, there's no way. Not. Yeah, okay. Surely not. <laughs> surely not. But, I mean, it is a counter pick in the gangplank. It's a Poppy. Is that is that Poppy jungle? Zanzara Poppy jungle. Yes, it is, Hawk. A, a, a bit of a counter pick here to the wukong you yeah. have the steadfast presence to prevent any engagements coming through from the nimbus strike the dash of jocko so i'm quite happy with this one and now all of this pressure built up to this r5 counter pick in the top lane if it's a scion i'm going to be very sad you it's know nar. it's not a scion but it's a similar level of just uh, uninspiring okay. i think it's the word yeah. that i'm looking for yeah i that's really surprising to me too i feel like you knew your matchup the whole time and and so it's so interesting to me to see solari not leverage that red side counter pick in any way um i mean of course they still have a really strong 2v2 on the bottom side so like losing the counter pick there doesn't feel too bad or anything but my eyes are immediately drawn towards this poppy jungle i think that is the most interesting pick here in the draft and now i i agree it could be pretty good in the wukong wukong has a lot of dashes poppy gets very tanky super annoying to play against but you know we've been talking about things like the udir we just saw it last game it's pretty good into something like the wukong how does this compare to you uh as a pick as opposed to something like that Udir. 
Yeah, I think that the, the Poppy has a little bit more dueling power early on than the Udi, and we get to see what our predictions were for this game. Uh, you've actually opted into Solari. How do you feel about that now that you've seen, seen the picks locked in? So, hear me out. I'm not inspired by the NAR pick, but I think Solari <laughs> actually has a very well-rounded and easy-to-execute composition. There's a lot of damage, uh, front-loaded, and, and it seems like they've got a lot of comfort, but what I'm really going for... That results-based analysis, rude dude. Solari, they uh, took a game off of Miss Miss Premier last time. They're gonna do it again. I believe in them because you know what? I am vying for this to stay as competitive as possible. Yeah, that's fair enough. Completely uh, understand that one. Uh, and you know, me myself went on the opposite direction. Certainly got my eyes set on the bot lane. Uh, Illusion Nami up against Azeri seems very, very good. Yeah, it definitely does. Well, we're gonna toss to the videos, and when we come back, we'll be back on the rift. So we've got a good game queued up for you guys. Welcome to Summoner's Rift for Game 3 of the English coverage of the LFL. It is, of course, Misfits Premier on the blue side up against Solari on the red. It's sure to be a good one, Rude. Dude, we've already had two crazy games. Or is this one going to live up? Hey, if we go 3-for-3, three three, I will not be surprised in any capacity. And I think that Zeri is a champion that sort of incites that as well. Whenever you see a Zeri just weird late game chaos always seems to ensue if you yeah. do uh, do get to that point my concern is uh, and something that i was uh, a little bit conscious of was like i say this zeri pickup coming through they are against Lucian nami and zeri in my eyes notoriously poor laner uh outside of that obviously a very good champion scaled incredibly well with infinite movement speed really into that late game but uh, they have to get through that will Vander need to try and coax their way through that and in times gone by when this team didn't look quite so good. They had a lot of laning issues in this bot lane. Solari and, uh, Solari's bot lane, Azure and Steelback, have been their shining star for the bots, or for Solari as a team on the whole. So if there was ever a world where we saw a bit of a revert back to past times gone by for Misfits Premier, this is one of those times when I could really see uh, Solari coming out with a bot side advantage. Yeah, you know, Rudude, as the temporary Solari stan, I'd love to hear you say that. I'm yeah. looking for it to happen to Fireworks in the bot lane. And another thing to follow up on that point, too, that I think is interesting is, yeah, Zeri, not the best laner. And, you know, Nautilus up against Lucianami, while you can get bullied out, also packs a lot of all-in threat. But Zeri doesn't really have the most all-in damage, in my experience. So I feel like even that, in and of itself, is maybe a bit of an anti-synergy here for Wu Light and Vander. Agreed, agreed. Uh, that was something that I was like, okay, they've picked Nautilus, what are they going to pair with it? Oh, it's just late game hyper like scale. That, you know, you don't... No, it's, it's not, you know? Exactly. You, you're quite right. Uh, I certainly share those concerns with you, but what we do, or, or what I'm certainly happy enough about, is that there are certainly top side conditions for Mystic Premier that they can match sure. and that they can meet sure. on their own, which is this Poppy in the jungle picked as a counter to Jocko, I think is going to have the run of things in early duels, despite the fact that, you know, it's Wukong and early dueling. Uh, and then also this GP, which Mystic Premier put a lot of emphasis on, a lot of control, a lot of priority was laid down on their mark for this. Uh, I think that it's going to have a very good time. Like you mentioned, the NAR counter pick particularly uninspiring. And the early game stage, I think Chayek with this Azir should be winning out up against Scarlet in the mid lane. Yeah, I mean, Kakos already getting Pryo up here on the top side in the counter matchup. Generally, when you have R5 counter, you want that to be a guaranteed winning lane. It becomes a point of pressure for your team. And so to see this Pryo go down, definitely a good spot to be in for Misfits Premier and Zanzara. Pathing up in that direction as well to protect Kakos. Clearly having a lot of priority. They believe in their top laner to be able to make plays on this. There was a meeting of the junglers up there. I think just some damage traded back and forth as Jocko and Zanzara are both going to tell each other to back up and uh, probably not much else <laughs> yeah no mid lane roams coming through here and it looks like sanzara still Ooh. a little greedy potentially trying to go for this dive you're quite right jocko has gone and there's a big wave on this top side if they can get this going i'm not sure how easy this dive is to execute but they're gonna go for it anyway yeah, look for the shoulder charge. Oh, Keel with a great flash. Manages to kite it out. Now Zanzara tanking the shots, going to walk away. But what Go an again. outplay from Keo. The re-engage, though, could be bad. Trial by fire, going to land. But Zanzara picked up the aggro. Keo gets the triumph. He trades two back. 
Yeah, that was a bit of a misclick, unfortunately, from Kachkos. He has the trial by fire ready and then autos, I believe, his barrel under the turret as opposed to Keo. Means that he too trades his life and a double kill for Keo in the top lane. About as poorly as that could have gone for Misfits Premier outside of not getting the kill. Like you mentioned, great flash to get away from the heroic charge into the wall initially. And Kachkos steps up here and then watch this first gangplank auto attack. Not quite getting the execute. If he autos there, he autos and gets out alive. That was not the case, and unfortunately, it's a double kill for the Solari top laner. Oh, what a, what a touch and go fight, and, and so well played to Kyo. Again, that fla like if he doesn't flash that, he probably just instantly dies. So, really well done, and, and very impressive stuff. And that's a huge play, because Zanzaro also committed a lot of time to that. Meanwhile, Jocko was farming up a storm. Now he's just going for another gang. Scarlet gets jumped what? on, gets interrupted. No Valkyrie, but oh, finds the flash, flash and actually manages to live. Comet. Oh, now Jocko going to try to go in, try to trade it back onto Chayek. One more auto will do it. Doesn't have the flash. Can't quite he find went. it. The Q not in range. Now Zanzara going to try to push him away. And everybody survives in the mid lane. Oh, a game of margins in this mid lane as both of the junglers try to make their impact felt. Uh, Jocko not quite able to find the kill onto Chayek. Similarly for Zanzara. Not able to find the kill for Scarlet. And what a good guy Kyo is. What yeah. is this? Where are my top planers like this? Yeah, Kyo being the best top it's laner I've ever homie. seen right what now. Jocko, yeah, getting funneled by his top. And now he's going to be up. What is that? That's, that's going to be four camps on the poppy after he smites this one away. Absolutely huge. Can Zanzara try to trade this one back? He has the hex flash going in. Jocko oh. going to get run down. No flash will get dropped. So... Mistress Vermeer, do find the punish. Okay, uh, and, and good as well. Uh, Keo, you know, as much as he tried to coax his jungler through there, Jocko a little bit too far forward and does get punished for it. Now Zanzara going to opt into a Raptor Steal as well. That may also go poorly. Uh, we can see Scarlet Roaming, we can see Steel back oh, going. No. This looks like a bit of a PS to start us off. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a comedy of invades right now. Zanzara takes so much damage from that Nami Electrocute, and he's going to drop, and... You know, last game, we got to see a Corky get an early kill and do quite a bit of damage as the game progressed. Didn't end up winning, but was uh, was pretty strong through Dude. And now, I think we're in a similar position. Oh, no, not again. Uh, I wondered if Jocko was just going to go back invade on that top side. He is spotted out on the Scuttle Crab and then this ward as well. But Mega for Keo means it probably doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, Keo going to try to go in. Look for the oranges. Able to find the cleanse. Actually dodges out on the Thwomp, but no, there's no way out. Kakos... Doesn't have the or does have the flash, but it's not going to carry you far enough away. Jocko trades another one back. We've got six kills in six minutes. <laughs> Zanzara immediately into the bot side jungle this time round. We see enemy jungle at top lane. We go here. Uh, he has got hex flash, so may just look to try and dive in the mid lane once more. Scarlet going to have to watch out. This is a level four poppy at seven minutes, but Zanzara doesn't care. Wow. That's the shoulder charge into the Sharima shuffle. No way out. And Chayek picks up a kill for himself. I've never seen a poppy jungle played like this, and it's confusing my brain. <laughs> it's confusing my brain, <laughs> Zanzara's, too. Zanzara's doing very well. I can't discredit this play at all. He's, he's you know, going for the looks, trying to punish this Corky in the early game, and thus far has been largely successful, uh, forcing another kill. This time it's Chayek that, get, that gets it. So, kudos. Uh, the... the Rough sequence of events that happened in the top lane, uh, and then the uh, since then it's been kind of okay, all good. The, the constant yeah. aggressive dives are something that I'm not particularly aware of. Something that you'll see from Zara fairly frequently is just him sacrificing his own camps, his own lanes to or his own farm to get his own lanes up ahead. And we're seeing that this time round. He had four camps up ready to go when he went for that dive in the mid lane. Did not care for them so long as he could get Chayek an extra bit of gold. Yeah, and despite all these plays, uh, the game is dead even, Rude Dude. The gold is less than 100 apart between these two teams. So uh, we've definitely got a long way to go before anyone finds a meaningful advantage. But the plays back and forth have definitely been exciting <laughs> at the very least. So uh, Kachko is now going to just push in this top lane up very significantly in this one-on-one -on -one matchup. Of course, Keo missed a pretty big wave after that early dive, but... Even so, I think Kachkos has grown this lead, and now Zanzara with the level 6 going to force Kyo off, and there is no one to help him. That's okay. bad news. Yeah, it's it's going to be uh, some plates going over on both sides of the map. Azur and Steelback are going to be able to force Wulite a little bit off the turret as well, uh, and, you know, 
at least secure a, a few waves of play as well down there. But same can be said on the top side. Keo forced off. But Giocco here, potentially, to make Wallax life a bit of a miserable situation. Oh, oh, Jocko doesn't quite find the Cyclone. Wulai just able to dash over the wall and get away. And can I just say, I feel so bad for Keo because he has this crazy 2v1 outplay on the initial dive and, and the rest of his team goes, great job. Do, Do that again. again. We're going to leave <laughs> yeah. you. <laughs> and, then, and you know, fair enough. Your team picks Lucianami. You're right. very aware of what role you're playing. Yeah, very true. As uh, Asa gets interrupted on the base, has to flash away. Wulite follows it up, but there's not enough damage. Death charge. Finally able to find it with the depth charge, as you say. Now Jocko on the backside. Wulite, no flash, no exhaust available. Got Could get taken down. Vander going to try to play defense, but Wulite just going to try to trade out for Steelback, and he does. Ends up being two for one on the bottom side with Wulite picking up both kills. Yeah, very worthwhile for the Misfits Premier bot lane right there. We talked about Lucian Nami being a very powerful 2v2. The fact that they get solo killed right there, really not very good. And Jocko no, also Kyo. being there. No! Oh, that feels so bad. Is there a flash? Knock up. Kyo, hop away. The Gangplank Ultimate secures it. The poor Nar after the outplay gets taken down once again. Oh, and he didn't lose his turret as well. This is Misfits Premier winning out on all fronts right now. They get that 2v3 double kill in the bot lane. They're taking this turret as well. Double demolish procs to add insult to injury as Misfits Premier take first brick in that top lane. And remember, Catch Course first picks the Gangplank. They wanted this for a reason. Happy to see Zanzara put so much priority on it. The fact that his bot lane is winning independently, an absolute bonus. Yeah. I mean, Woolite is down in the farm department, but he got two kills, including one of yeah, them. Yeah, don't care, yeah. Yeah, credit to Vander in particular for finding that engage onto the backing Essa. That was really the big difference maker right there. I, you feel like if that base goes off, that doesn't happen, right? Uh, mm -hmm. it, now or later. And so, Misfits from here, they've now ballooned this goal lead. We, I feel like I was just saying it was dead even, right? Now, they're 2,000 ahead. And they're, they're just going to go for it continually trying to accelerate leads, trying to put as many resources into the correct members as possible. You see second blue buff given over uh, to the mid lane, to Chayek, so that he can continually farm, continually have a bit of poke, a bit of harass in that mid lane. And it's largely, uh, and you know, we expected this Corky versus Zero is the area where we've seen the least action. But we've still seen a, a little bit of aggressiveness going down there, right? Sanzara did yeah. perform that dive at I, level I think that's four. on Sanzara. <laughs> just when he went for ganking. it, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and we have we have seen a lot of aggression towards that mid. That that dive under tower was pretty crazy with the the hex flash in the, the hex flash poppy. I've got to say this is some technology rude, dude. I I am very impressed with how Zanzara has managed to use this to find multiple kills. And uh, well, with that, you know we have to kind of keep our eyes on uh, and see if he can continue to accelerate those hex flashes, find even more kills, even more situations where he needs to be traversing out of the bush in... oh, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's not that crazy <laughs> at least he's here to shadow his adc those woolite here to try and collect some plates and zara uh, not spotted but they kind of know they have that gut intuition okay there's a there's a pink ward in here it probably wasn't woolite who just morphed that one over a wall so we'll accept it we'll move on and just move about the bot lane clearing business but they do have very quick execute. If there's a hook that lands, it doesn't matter if Jocko is on his gromp. He's not going to get there in time to prevent a dive, to prevent a kill coming through. Yeah, the explosiveness of this engage can be so fast. Poppy and Nautilus, that's so much single target lockdown. So as we have this dragon spawning in about a minute, I have a feeling that's what we're going to keep our eyes on. Looking at the item spikes, it is Mythics across the board right now for Misfits Premier. And if I know anything, rude dude, from the, the Corky Azir meta, it's that team fighting on a not fully stacked Corky is one of the most feels bad man things in the game. Yeah, it's it really does just turn from zero to 100 in terms of the damage that a Corky deals around that Muramana spike as well. Uh, we don't have any magic damage built up either yet. So this is the sort of stage in the game where the auto attacks from a Corky really do a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But you'll see this. This is something that we didn't particularly see from Mirage last game. Timing your packages with the Drakes. 20 seconds on that Cloud Dragon spawning. A lot of control around this bot side for both teams. Solari moving Keo down. Mrs. Premier moving Catch Cost down. Now Azza. Uh -huh. Ooh. That was, that, I like that attempt. If Zanzara could have found the angle into that little corner of the wall, that would have been cool. They but die. now package in. It doesn't actually land, though. Dodges out on the Keeper's Verdict. Zanzara in danger. But who's killing? Who's Scarlet taking solo? The fight is split. Jocko.
still wants to find the engage on into the enemy jungler. Rublek like gonna get taken down on the backside. It's gonna be two quick kills going the way of Solari. Zanzara goes for the attempt but gets punished. Very nice execution on the bot side by Solari, capitalizing on the overstep from Zanzara. A little bit too far forward, and that hex flash over the wall is actually the thing that costs him his life there. Hook Ooh, hits, potential re engage. Yeah, lands the hook. Catch Coast going to arrive for this fight. Depth charge going in. Azza and Joko oh. so low. Chayak into the back line, kills the Lucian. Now Jocko going to try to trade it back. The Azir cannot get away, but the cannon barrage doing so much work to keep follows through. And Scarlet ends up dropping 2v2 in the river, but the respawns favor Misfits Premier. Can they kite this one out? Kachkos doing so much damage with those grass procs, and Keo is going to realize he's outgunned in this fight and backs away. Kachkos has been destroying these team fights. There's only, there's only been one, but that was absolutely gorgeous gangplank mechanics in that engagement. Really does turn that team fight back around. Great timing between the depth charge and the cannon barrage to set up for a Chayek slide. Uh, a little bit slow on the, the buttons from Chayek, but he largely gets away with it, gets the kill that he was searching for. And Mistress Premier, despite the fact that they ended up losing their jungler and ADC at the start of it, are the ones that come out with a beneficial fight and the dragon going their way. And how about the coordination too? Vander with the re-engage into the 5v3. That's confidence right there. That is trust in your team. And as you said, Catch Coast, the placement on the GP ult, so clean. And Misfits Premier, they end up coming out ahead. They maintain their gold advantage now at 3,000 and equalizing the drakes i think all three games today rude dude we've seen first drake get taken by one team and then the next drake get taken by the other it's been a lot of back and forth action and i think the name of the game has been action as uh yeah, and nine to eight <laughs> i'm certainly not i'm certainly not arguing right this has been a really good day to watch of lfl right you you the, the notion of we'll introduce a caster with some fairly basic games some <laughs> rudimentary <laughs> legal legends here. from the lfl has not been applied, you're quite right. You've been thrown in at the absolute deep end and uh, fully experiencing the chaos that we get from your ERLs. Yeah, you know, as in, in one of my rare times doing play-by-play -play casting, they just wanted to give me a lot of fights to get my reps in, and it's definitely been fun. And it is good to see these teams being so competitive because that is something that sticks out so much about the LFL right now is it feels like outside of a couple of teams, but, you know, even LDLC, right? It seemed like they were uncompetitively too good. They mm -hmm. get dropped. Every team is so competitive with one another. They push each other to the brink, and it really is great competition to watch. And it's one of the reasons why the LFL is one of the premier ERLs here in the scene, as now Jocko just going to trade an ult back and forth to get away. Okay, so Flash was burned by Catch Cost there. I'm not too sure quite the circumstances that led that to need to be the case, but Gangplank with no Flash is a bit more of a target, a bit easier to take down. Uh, then obviously going play with flash we'll have to see whether or not that can be executed on appropriately or not Azir turret in the mid lane right there was actually fairly interesting that tends to happen around when you've got a drake spawn to again cheat try and wrest some mid control away from you or away from the enemy team but it's not going to be used for that purpose this time around just to i, I don't know keep him uh, farming on the map whilst he's out in base so for the most part uh this game going the way of mrs premier right now and we are quite happy with that as well if you know. you're Misfits Prem, because they've got the late game scaling of a Zeri, Azir, and Gangplank. Three champions that, as carries, all do tremendously well in the late game. And for Solari, we mentioned that their bot lane, Lucian Nami, was the crucial crux that had been carrying them through some games. Unfortunately, this game, they've kind of been missing. Yeah, they just haven't really been able to find their way into too many fights. And I think a lot of credit should go to Misfits Premier for the way they've been able to zone Azza in a lot of these fights. But it is definitely difficult when... You just pick this very volatile lane and you're not able to get in. You give up a 2v2 kill. You give up two 2v2 kills. It's just not really according to plan, unfortunately. And uh, not according to the plan of my prediction either. But Rude Dude, I think we have gone the longest that we have so far this game. Yeah. We got a kill going down. And and we, we have to be careful saying those words uh, because it does tend to just absolutely barrel force action down our throats when we start to make statements like that. Yeah. For the time being... Uh, Chayek, you know, going to give us a kill of some capacity, killing a turret in the bot lane, takes down that turret and secures himself again a little injection of gold, working his way toward that shadow flame and a two item Azir, certainly something to be fearing. If you are Solari, uh, getting back into that backline, not something that they should be struggling with, they've got Wukong and the Gnar, uh, and something that rem remembers and sticks out in my mind is Jocko on the Wukong, constantly looking for different angles to find engages. It's something that I've been incredibly impressed with him by, and I think that it's a reason that we're still seeing Wukong picked 
on this new patch where obviously the champion itself got uh, significantly removed from control from priority what people were expecting to be strength so with the wukong on jocko keep your eyes on his flank angles keep your eyes on those engages because for me that is where he shines on this champion for sure. I mean, Wukong, it's a champion that just does a lot of things well, right? So if you're able to get it in a decent matchup, which this one even wasn't really. We, we were favoring the Poppy, but Jocko playing the game pretty nicely. Dragon spawning in 35 seconds. I think that'll break the seal on our kill drought. I, I have a sneaking suspicion that these teams mm. are going to fight for that. Um, maybe that's a hot take, but no, uh. it's just going to be an engage in the mid lane beforehand. Asa gets chunked out, but it's just going to fizzle. It's Misfits for Mirror. They're trying to get as much priority as they can in the mid lane. The classic flash for poke from Zanzara. <laughs> uh, Dash under the toe takes us down to about half HP. Uh, but he has got Nami there. He's probably got lifeline runes as well going. So a potential for that health pool to Jocko, really get built up. This is interesting. Yeah, I mean, this just, this just gives Dragon over yeah. instantly. The classic flash for, for poke trade and the classic gromp for Dragon trade. Those are my two favorites yep. in League of Legends. I obviously, Misfits for, or excuse me, Solari, they want the top tower. They should be able to get it. So I guess... It's decent for them, but I'm actually pretty surprised they weren't fighting on these these sheen spikes that they have right now. Yeah, they don't have completed looters just yet. I think that's something they're looking to. They may not even get this top turret. Catch Cost's ult has done enough damage, and now Vanda's looking to roam up a 2v2 between these champions. May not go quite the way Mr. Premier are hoping. Yeah, Vander going oh, to try to find the engage, but I think he gets a solo kill. <laughs> <laughs> the Nar just gets dropped by the Nautilus, and Jocko watches his top laner get felled and can only run away. Ah, uh, mini Nar things, I guess. He, if that's Mega Nar, completely different story, but the yeah. resists have dropped off. Your health just drops as well. And, I mean, where were you when Vander solo killed the top lane? I mean, you know, there, there was a little bit of damage done prior. Kachkos did get the assist, and now he has to make a bit of an escape as well. Yeah, now Vander gonna have to put in double duty and Jocko and Sealback not going to commit forward onto it. Yeah, I, I mean, Ignite too, such a strong summoner spell when the Nar's that low. Does so much true damage, able to take that one down. So nicely played by Vander to actually answer that one back. And that definitely is bad gone to worse for Solari though. Already just giving up the dragon for free. They're not even able to get the objective that they so wanted. Now Wu Light, though, jumped on, force of flash. Okay. We're getting to see something, you know, proactive from the solution, Nami. It's not something that we've really seen at all, and I'll give them credit for capitalizing on what was ultimately a bit of a misstep from Woolite right there. You can't be stepping into the face of Illusion, who has got Gale Force, has got the Nami move speed as well given to her by the passive. A good adaptation or good capitalization more so from Azra and Steelback to punish and get that Zeri with a slightly worse set of cooldowns. And it does show, even despite being behind 5,000 gold now in this game, Solari, they're still trying to find something. They're trying to find the top tower. They're trying to find a kill in mid and hasn't quite gone according to plan. But if you keep looking for those kind of plays, that's how something eventually goes your way. They're not just going to roll over and die. Now... The Ludens has been completed on the Corky. So if that's why they weren't Ooh. fighting last time, they now have it in their inventory. So Purple Worm on the Rift. Where <laughs> are we looking to fight? Do you think they're going to stall out for the next dragon or are we looking for some fireworks around the Baron? The thing is, next dragon is still only a Cloud Drake. So it, it, it does. Oh, True. sorry. It's another Hextech Drake. Excuse me. The classic UI overface uh, into Facebook. Well, it's been a thing for um, a long time. <laughs> yeah, it has. It's pretty much since they got rid of the since they got rid the of Chemtech, the yeah. Chemtech Drakes. Yeah. Uh, but right now, Mr. Premier, they've not really shown too many signs of heading toward that Baron. But controlling the top side always gives you the chance. Uh oh, Chaya gets jumped on, forced to Emperor's Divide. Jocko goes in and actually forces out the flash. Maybe a bit premature from Chaya, but plays it safe, doesn't want to get taken down. And that's yeah, a pretty big flash, cooldown burned. If he doesn't flash there, actually, you just get Nimbus Strike 2 from Jocko and then the knock up following oh. and all the damage that would follow from that. So it's yeah. uh, maybe a bit uh, a bit of a, a cooldown to be wasted, but it, I think overall saves his life uh, on the, the all told there. But. Uh, that top lane tier 2 turret is actually fairly low. Certainly could go down uh, with a stiff breeze if uh, we want to see Mr. Premier slightly overload on that top side. Get a bit of a cash injection. Uh, at some point later on down the line, not looking like it's going to be their particular mission focus for right now. As we do just get to see a little bit of a retraction, a bit of a retreat. What I'd love to see from all of the Mystics Premier members right here is in-sync recalls. Make sure that everybody has got all of their gold spent. And that right now, that gold lead of 5.5k, nearing 5k right now, is at its apex. All of the gold has been spent by Mystics Premier because they all recalled and all spent their gold at the same time. 
This is as strong as they're going to be relative to Solari, who are still staggered and are still sitting on bits and bobs of gold in their inventory. Yeah, Solari, no one actually taking a reset except for Kyo. The best teams, they recall like the popular boy band. And that's exactly what we saw. Misfits in sync with their resets as they do spend that gold. And it looks like they want to try to threaten for this Baron before the dragon spawns. And as you say, you know, it's all, it's not a soul. It's only going to be the third Hextech Drake for Misfits Premier if they get it. So if you can threaten for the Baron, that would give you a larger advantage, right? As now both teams, they're going to look for mid cryo. Jocko going in, but there's the poppy. There we go. First time we really get to see it. First time that interaction really gets highlighted, but that's exactly what they've been hoping for with this Poppy counter pick. We've seen a lot of different plays from the Poppy and, uh, we, you know, re relative to diving, trying to take down Corky, take down Lucian, whatever it may have been. Uh, but that Steadfast Presence is a disengaged tool, something that we're now getting to see highlighted as well. For sure. And unfortunately for Jocko, didn't overcommit either. No Cyclone was burned preemptively. They're just going to oh. helicopter... Interesting, Zanzara may be looking to punt someone out and go for an engage, but it's a package through the middle as Scarlet what? pulls the trigger. Death Charge is on, but he's out of range. There's no follow-up. Aza gets taken so low, but manages to survive. Chai forced into the Zonias. It's a split fight with Jocko in the back line. They should be able to find the kills. Solari, they find one, maybe two. Zanzara most certainly going to die. Scarlet may be able to get out even. Cannon Barrage slow should prevent that. So they're going to trade their mid laner away, but it will be a one fight for the side of Solari. And a dragon as well. Uh, Scarlet goes on a, or leads the rest of Mr. Premier on a wild lived. goose chase, essentially, what? and manages to get the Drake from it. That package through the middle, I was like, I wasn't expecting it, I think. It caught me off guard. Definitely took me for a, a bit of a spin. And then, obviously, the rest of Mr. Premier were also a little bit caught off guard by it. They think, do we chase the Corky? Are we supposed to kill this man now for randomly flying into us? So, uh, like we say, uh, a fairly good sequence of events for Solari relative to the game state. They're down, you know, 6k gold, but they're the ones able to secure the Drake and come away with a one for one. I'll more than happily take that. Not too easily replicatable, I will admit, but another five <laughs> minutes time, maybe they go again. Yeah, I mean, hey, Quirky Package is such a game-changing ability, and credit to Scarlet too for he packages in, and then immediately his entire priority is creating distance, so that way by the time the Death Charge landed, there was no damage follow-up, no one was in range. Speaking of follow-up, Steel Package Ooh. chunked massively. He's just going to drop Zanzaro, finds a three-man knockup. It's going to be a big fight as Jocko, that's the clone, so nobody dies. Okay. Uh, Steel Package just barely limps away. He's the only person that doesn't get knocked up by the Keeper's Verdict, and... That actually saves him. Yeah. But ultimately, this is a, a great fight that's gone the way of Mystic Premier. Everybody has to recall, so they get 10, 20 seconds now where they can hit this Baron uninterrupted. Yeah, and Keo just TP'd into that fight, so he doesn't have that cooldown available now. Trying to push up the mid lane and come around. Narbar is in a pretty good position. Jocko, though, getting caught out. He should get taken down by Chaya. Yes, he does support trade it back. It's going to be a Baron for two, it seems, for the side of Misfits Premier. You type worth in all chat every single time. Yeah, Chayek and, uh, or rather, Chayek and Vanda there are sort of giving their life for the cause. I think that Vanda were, or Chayek was saving his E just in case he could get away, but ultimately got flanked by Keo off of a nice TP. But still, three, four, or two for one, plus they get the Baron. Certainly a worthwhile exchange for Misfits Premier. They've got Baron on Catch Cost, which is the sort of leading mm. split push threat for the Whoa. side of Misfits Premier. Yeah, that's Zeri for you. That's balanced uh, right there, baby. <laughs> this this is why we see Zeri banned. Uh, I think this is the first Zeri game that we've had of the day, but there's a reason that teams need to keep picking this champion. Yeah, it's just so crazy. And again, those two kills in lane, they're actually the only two kills that Wu Light even has, but just contributing so much to that gold. Has the completed Infinity Edge, unlike his opposite number there for Aza. Unfortunately, not quite being there. Only about a thousand gold off, so pretty soon. And Jocko, always, I feel like, towing the knife's edge, always being just inside the engage range of Misfits Premier, daring them to go in. It's it's worked sometimes, it hasn't worked other times, but with the Baron on, the siege shall begin. Yes, here two in the bot lane, going to be their focus. A lot of gold in these turrets outside the base. Zanzara. Yes, yeah, Zanzara just goes over the wall. Absolute giga champ play, and oh. it's going to be Chayek in the back line with the Emperor's Divide, and everybody on Solari gets wiped off the map. That's a clean ace, and that's going to be the game. Chayek, take a bow, good sir. That team fight has just won you the game. Absolutely gorgeous execution from the mid laner of Misfits Premier. They could have not have asked for a better fight. That truly was the most Giga Chat engage I've ever seen, Rudun. Misfits Premier, they're going to continue on their winning ways. They're going to continue your perfect prediction rate as well as Misfits Premier.